In this video, I want to give you a short introduction to evaluating definite integrals whose integrand is going to be an absolute value expression. If you'd like to try this example first on your own, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we will talk through the solution together. Okay, so here in this example, our limits of integration are from negative 1 to 2, and of course that's with respect to x. And our integrand is going to be this absolute value of, and we have 4x minus 3. So 4x minus 3 is actually a nice linear function. So when we graph this, 4x minus 3, it will be a line. The slope is positive 4, so it's a line that will be increasing as we move from left to right. And at some point in the middle here, we're going to have an x-intercept. Well, what does the absolute value bars do to the graph like this? Well, it takes the portion of the line that's below the x-axis, or that's negative, and it's going to reflect that up over the x-axis, so it's going to ultimately end up being positive. And that's why you see those graphs of absolute value functions that have linear functions inside are actually V-shaped graphs, because that portion of the line that was negative got reflected up over that x-axis. So recall one uh, additional piece of information. Whenever we're doing definite integrals, what we're doing is trying to evaluate or find the area of the region between the x-axis and the graph of our function. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the graph of this absolute value function and the shaded region for which we're finding the area. So you probably noticed a few things right off the bat about this graph. Probably you noticed those shaded regions are just triangles. So this would be easy to find geometrically, but that's not with the focus of the video. We're going to go ahead and do this analytically. Another thing you'll notice is that x-intercept was between our region negative 1 and 2. Okay, so what we had here was our negative 1 to 2, and in between there somewhere is this x-intercept. So let's go ahead and find that x-intercept by taking this 4x minus 3 and setting that equal to 0. Well, when I add 3 to both sides, I'll have 4x equals 3, and then dividing will show me that that x value is 3 fourths. So we're going to go ahead and say this is 3 fourths right there. So that v-shape kind of looked like this. And of course, the area that we're trying to solve for is here and here. But before we took the absolute value, this was a line that extended down below the x-axis. So if we were to take this definite integral without regards to the absolute value, it would actually take this portion of the graph and make the area negative instead of positive. So what we're going to do is break this absolute value integral up into two separate integrals. One that's going to take into account this negative uh, value that was reflected over the x-axis, and then the other that will just take this region right here all by itself. So let's go ahead and write these two integrals and what that'll look like here. Okay, so we're going to go from negative 1 to, well, 3 fourths, from negative 1 to 3 fourths, that's where this negative uh, area took place. And we're going to do this for the 4x minus 3 with respect to x. And of course, we're no longer using the absolute value bars, we're just going to use these parentheses here. But of course, that was the area that was negative, so we're going to go ahead and put a, a negative sign out front, uh, so we can go ahead and make it positive, obviously, change that sign. And to this integral, we will add the integral from 3 fourths up to 2 of that 4x minus 3 with respect to x. So you'll see, of course, both of these integrands are the same, 4x minus 3, but we're just using different limits of integration here. And the part of the graph that was going to be negative, we went ahead and put a negative out front to force it to be positive. Okay, so at this point, it's just going to be a lot of... Uh, evaluation here. So let's go ahead and figure out what this integral is going to be. So for 4x, that'll be 2x squared and then minus 3x. And of course, we're going from negative 1 to 3 fourths. And also, we had that negative out front. So to that, we will add, well, the same thing, 2x squared minus 3x. 
but this time we're going from 3 fourths up to 2. So for this evaluation, we're going to plug the 3 fourths in and then plug the negative 1 in, subtract those values, and then take the opposite of that. And then add, we'll plug the 2 in, plug the 3 fourths in, subtract those, and we'll take all those numbers and add them up. So I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, fairly quickly, and here we go. So we have 74 eighths, which then we can reduce by 2, and it looks like we'll have 37 fourths for that integral. Okay, and as you saw, that was a lot of evaluation going on, so it probably was worth going through and doing that quickly. That's not really the point of the video. I just wanted to talk through mostly uh, conceptually what's going on here. So whenever we have these absolute value functions as integrands, Whatever portion of the graph that would have been negative previously will be now reflected over the x-axis, and that area, again, which would have been negative, is now positive. So instead of subtracting it, we'll be adding it. So when you have these absolute value integrals, you'll find any x-intercepts first, and then you will determine uh, between those x-intercepts where is our graph negative, and then you'll just ensure that you subtract that negative area out so it'll end up being a positive area. So there's a quick overview of evaluating definite integrals that contain absolute value integrands.